Hey guys, welcome back to the tutorial on understanding Agile, a common sense approach. In the last episode, we discussed about test driven development in detail. Let us continue learning about Agile testing. What is BDD and how is it different from TDD? Tell me more about Agile testing. As you know, in Agile, the requirements in the form of user stories are written along with acceptance criteria. The acceptance criteria defines the behavior which the software will gain on implementation of that story. The dev team then develop the feature in order to achieve this behavior. This approach of software development is also known as behavior driven development or BDD. These acceptance criteria will later lead to acceptance test cases. Hence, it is also known as acceptance test driven development. Now, sometimes the requirements are captured in the form of realistic examples instead of abstract statements. These examples are used to provide clarity and precision so that the same information can be used as specification and business oriented functional test. This approach is very useful for large scale complex projects. It is because in such projects, when the business analysts, programmers and testers maintain separate document, the synchronization becomes challenging and time consuming. So everyone maintains the specification as single source of truth in a live document. It is called live document because everyone keeps updating it with any additional information discovered during the development or delivery. The development here is driven by example. Hence the name example driven development. Story testing and story test driven development is yet another name with the same philosophy of BDD. Now let me explain the process of execution of behavior driven development. Step one, the customer provides the system specifications. Step two, the dev team creates acceptance test cases from the acceptance criteria. Step three, the development team creates high level skeleton code to run the acceptance test cases. Step four, run the acceptance test case to fail, which seems obvious since there is no implementation yet. Step five, dev team writes the technical implementation. Here TDD process can be applied. One business story can be comprised of multiple technical units. So as the UTC start passing the development, ATCs for the story also start passing. Thus, the development of story is driven by the acceptance test cases. Now suppose the developer needs to change the technical implementation. The UTCs will get affected. However, the ATCs will still remain same. But coach, why is it important to run the test case to fail? I remember that there is a similar step in the test driven development too. Okay, assume that you are working on a maintenance project. A new functionality needs to be added to the existing method. What if you run the test case and it does not fail even before the implementation? What would that mean? It means either the functionality is already present or maybe the test case is not correctly written. That is correct, which also means if it does not fail, you will never know if there was a problem. This is why it is an important step. Now let me answer your earlier question. BDD is more of a customer centric, which begins with a bunch of failing acceptance test cases. Whereas TDD is more developer centric, which begins with failing unit test cases. BDD is outside, TDD is inside. Now let us classify agile testing using Brian Marek's Agile Testing Quadrant. The upper two quadrants Q2 and Q3 are business facing. The lower two are technology facing. The left two quadrants are used as a part of quality assurance to support programming. And the right quadrants are to critique the product for quality control. Now with this information, try to fill the quadrants with all the testing types you know. Please give it a try. I hope you have seen my video on basic terminologies in IT. If not, please watch it to understand the meaning of quality assurance and quality control.
Q1 is the quadrant of TDD. Q2 is the quadrant of BDD. Q3 consists of running various acceptance test cases and test scenarios. Q4 consists of various types of system testing. What is usability testing? And why is it present in both Q2 and Q3 quadrants? In the user experience or usability testing, users are given the product to use for a task without telling them on how to use it. For example, the task can be browse the product offering and purchase an item. Here, the given product is e-commerce website under development. Then the observations are made to understand what is causing users to have trouble. These insights help to validate what is working and to determine how to improve the design. Ideally, Q1 should be automated. Q2 could be combination of automated and manual testing. Q3 is mostly manual and Q4 is tools driven. In theory, there can be infinite number of test cases which are possible for a given scenario. During agile software development, the deliveries are done with small iteration. In such situation, RBD comes handy. Here, the test cases are prioritized based on the potential risk of missing them. Risk is the probability that an undetected software bug may have a negative impact on the user of a system. So there are various types of risk related to business, for example, based on the cost of failure, operational risk, for example, based on the usage of particular feature, technical risk, for example, complexity of the subsystem or functions, process related risk, for example, integration defects, etc. Now let us learn about some of the principles of agile testing. Testing is not a phase. Agile teams test continuously and continuous testing is the only way to ensure continuous progress. Testing moves the project forward. When following conventional method, testing is considered as quality gate. But in Agile, testing provides feedback on the ongoing basis and the product meets the business demand. Everyone tests. In conventional SDLC, only the test team tests. While in Agile, developers, business analysts, Everyone tests the application. Shortening feedback response time. In conventional SDLC, only during the acceptance testing, the business team will get to know the product development. While in Agile, for each and every iteration, they are involved. And continuous feedback shortens the response time and the cost involved in fixing the bug is also less. Clean code. The raised defects are fixed within the same iteration and thereby keeping the code clean. The TDD approach we discuss comes from Extreme Programming, XP. Let's learn about XP in the next video.